That's racing over here in Léger, France. Racers were treated to an old school style track. And what that means is they pretty much just stick some ski poles in down an open grassy field and have them race it. Internet weapons were out in force after track walk complaining that it was tame and not even good enough for cross country. But those troglodytes wouldn't know a good race course if it came up and slapped them in the face. One of the main themes during the live feed was that the younger races wouldn't be very familiar with this style of course, but they were forgetting that Crankworks has taken place on the exact same course for the past three years. And what young rider has not set up a slalom course with jumpers down a grassy bit of field? Looking at the results, the general trend is that racers didn't really go that much faster on the race runs compared to qualifying. This is quite rare and it shows that the track was much more challenging on race day compared to qualifying day. Well, I say times didn't really improve much. The one person bucking that trend was Valley Hall, who went seven seconds faster than her quali, beating second place rider Anna Newkirk by about six seconds. Interesting fact is that her time would have won her the elite women's category. You just know the pink bike comments are blowing up with this right now. Let me leave you with a little thought though. There was actually an entire junior men's race plus an hour of elite practice before the elite women got to race the track. That means it would have changed quite a lot. So let's not put too much stock in these comparisons until she moves up into the elite category next year. Really excited to see how she does. Thibaut Duprella had to fight for the win this weekend with Canadian juniors Patrick Laffey and Seth Sherlock only about two seconds back in second and third. Duprella was up by more time further up the hill, which leads me to believe he may have made some mistakes on the lower parts of the hill. I'm sure he'll be really happy to make up for his disappointing race last weekend in Andorra. In the women's race, who would have thought that that last drop would end up being so decisive? Eleonora Farina was the first woman to really get it good and it made a big difference. She was in sixth at the last split and then catapulted herself into fourth place, career best. Nice one in doing that drop. Mariana Salazar looks so composed and stylish on track and she put some really good power through the pedals when she needed to. She absolutely greased that last step down better than all the other women. And I loved in the post-race interview when she threw some accidental shade on the other racers saying that she couldn't understand where the rest were struggling because it didn't seem that hard to her. I think she's just really good at jumps. Cabaru put the her on the other women on that top section. She was up to speed so quick, carried it down those upper sections. The time she made up there secured her the hot seat and I thought it was going to be her first win. Really did. But Tracy Hanna, she had to deny her. She won up Marine on every section except that technical woods where she just kept it clean and did what she needed to do. It's insane to think that she had to strap up her ankles for that bottom drop which shows just how harsh it was. But mechanical doping anyone? Is that illegal? <laughs> so cool to see how ecstatic she was at the finish. I had to go around and ask her how it felt. Leo Gang, you were clearly quite emotional, but really happy. But here, no tears, just pure stoke. You were flipping bouncing around the finish arena. How was it feeling for you? Uh, yeah, I was like super stoked because like after Rachel got injured and then struggling with the track a lot, like especially with the last jump. Mm. And then the times are so close with Marin, and then a little bit of extra pressure for the overall. I was just like in a lot of different places in my mind this weekend, mm. and it came down to like not overriding and riding yeah. and crashing like I did in Andorra, but not underriding and then kind of throwing away the opportunity to lead the overall. So, yeah, I guess I was stoked because I managed to like get everything to point in one direction and mm. and have a super like clean safe run where i wasn't taking any risks mm. and i was just really surprised that to come down like i thought it was going to be a second place run so you did everything you wanted to really i did everything i wanted to i wanted to keep the leader's jersey i wanted to not be injured i wanted to not throw it away on the track <laughs> and to come away with the win i was like super stoked i mm. knew marin was going to be one to compete with here and yeah. you know the times are so close yeah. so that was like sick. In the men's category, I'm so happy to see Brendan Faircloth drop kick his way back into the top 10. He's been struggling in the mid pack for the past few years, but he's so talented and everyone just couldn't understand why he wasn't getting better results. Looks like a new bike and a ring on his finger has done the trick. Did you see Hugo Frixelon on that rooty right-hander we filmed on Inside the Tape? He wasn't the fastest sector through there, but he was definitely fastest through that turn. No doubt that helped him on his way to his year best 14th position. Minor correction for Claudio on G. Atherton. He's actually 
famous for taking his feet out all the time. Way back in Junior Worlds when he was a young racer, Sam Hill demolished him and everyone else actually. Foot off, drifting all the corners. Ever since then, G learned to just drop a leg whenever he felt it was going to be faster. G is the best person I know of at clipping out, cornering, and clipping straight back in again. It is a real skill. Laurie Greenland is back to his best. His run reminded me of his Valdez Soul run from 2017. Just getting so wild, looking so out of control, yet making no mistakes. So cool to see him back performing and interestingly, if you didn't know, the Mondraker team are on mixer bikes. They got 29 fronts, 27 and a half backs. Those mullets are definitely performing. Greg Minar over that route in the woods. Oh, sublime style. That is all, that's all I wanted to say on that. <laughs> Loris Vergier, fair flip in play, man. To get fifth place after what he went through this weekend as mental. I went to have a chat with him to get a blow by blow. So I'm here with Freddie Mercury. You sing good today? Uh, I'm, my voice is pretty good. It was just my head, it was tough because I crash, keep crashing. So it was tough. Yeah, I was actually waiting for you to come down and practice this morning and there was no sign of you. What happened? Uh, basically halfway down, I crashed into like a bad tree. Yeah. Snap a bar. Because, yeah, it was a bit crash and it was a bit weird, like feeling not that great. So I was like, I don't have time to do another run. And I was like, OK, it's time to race now. So it was kind of an enduro ride, but it was good, I guess. Not bad. And what were you, fifth place? Fifth, yeah. No way. Like, yeah. no practice on this day. Did you hit your head, I heard? Like yeah, like I, I changed my helmet just in case because it looked pretty bad. I made it down pretty safe and yeah, stuck to be on the fifth place, so I guess. So you broke free and got fifth? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like another podium bites the dust? Oh, that'd no be way. good. Anyway, congrats. Thank you. Well done. Get better. Go fast next time. I'll try. Lloyd Bruni is so flipping strong. Through those middle sections with his big holes, G out turns, and other people were getting stood up and bucked around. He just he just wasn't phased. He holds his form so well, and he was just rode nice and clean to get second place. In his own words, he was maybe a little too cautious, but second place is not gonna hurt his chances for the overall. Amari Pierron is the grass turn master. He absolutely killed everyone in those top grassy turns. But if only he'd gone point two faster, he'd have got a nice Miriam Nicole peep show. <laughs> they had a bet going and luckily for her, he lost it. So from where I was saying, his run looked absolutely perfect. Couldn't have gone any faster. I had to go and ask him how it was from his side of the camera. Bit of baguette, it's Fun good. Baguette. Cheers. Cheers to the baguette. So, um, watching the live feed, you looked like you were on the edge, perfect run, no mistakes, but for you, on the bike, did you think uh, it was perfect? <laughs> no, for sure it was not perfect, man. No? I, I almost died two times. Yeah, Three but times. you didn't slow down. I didn't slow down, because <laughs> the quad was just insane. Mm. All the way down, it's the first time I, I saw a quad like this, all the way down, crazy. A bit in the same as Labres. The French fans are mental, man. They love it. It's so good. Mm. And at the podium, it's the same. I never seen uh, a quad like this. Yeah. Massive. Mm. So good. It's just so good to, to ride in France. The fans are crazy, so that puts you to the limit. Not bad. And uh, you feeling pretty good now? What's that? Two wins now? Two wins. Sweet for the week. Yeah. The battle is on. Yeah, you think you can catch him? I catch him today, so why not? Yeah, cool. Well, good luck. Let's see. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. So I think we can all agree post-race, that old school track was rad to watch. Really good to mix it up. For those that didn't think it was that good, look forward to the next race in two and a bit weeks in Val de Sole, because that track is brutal. I'll be there with Pink Bike back inside the tape. Thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you then. Cheers.